Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Yale 20 lecture series. My name is Maximilian Stahl. I'm one of the second-year residents in the internal medicine program at Yale School of Medicine. This lecture is going to be about leukemia, and it originated in collaboration with one of our fantastic hematologists, Dr. Alfred Lee. What this lecture should accomplish is making yourself a little bit more comfortable with the topic of leukemia. I remember when I was a medical student, leukemia was always a black box for me, okay, a very complicated topic. And I had no clue how hematologists made the diagnosis and how they treated patients. All the strange cytogenetics, genetic mutations, more confused me than actually helping me managing a patient. And the goal of this talk is to kind of shed light on that a little bit and give you a general approach to leukemia. Let's start with a refresher. Okay, so leukemia is cancer of the white blood cells. We have different kinds of leukemia, AML, ALL, CML, CLL. There are acute leukemias, AML and ALL, and there are chronic leukemias, CML and CLL. AML stands for acute myelogenous leukemia. It's leukemia of your myelogenous cells, for example, your neutrophils. ALL is acute lymphoblastic leukemia, so lymphocytes. CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia. Probably most known to all of you because of use MLE questions involving the translocation between 9 and 22, the BCR ABL fusion gene. CLL stands for chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And lastly, APL is a subform of AML and stands for acute promyelocytic leukemia, also a very classic translocation between chromosome 15 and 17 and forms a fusion gene between PML, promyositic leukemia gene, and RA-alpha, retinoid acid receptor alpha. As with every Yale 20 presentation, we start with a workflow. First, the five-minute bedside assessment. Just picture yourself in a busy university hospital, and you are on night shift as a senior medical student or as an intern, on the leukemia ward, or on any ward, on any, on any medicine ward. And you get a call about an admission for a patient who has on his chart the words of leukemia written on, either acute or chronic leukemia. Okay? What I want you to take away in this section is a couple of clues that help you triage this patient. Does this patient need to see a hematologist overnight, or can it wait? Is this admission mainly for the leukemia, or is it for other unrelated issues in a leukemic patient? The section is followed by diagnosis and differential. The goal of the section is to give you, first, an overall diagnostic approach to leukemia. And we want to teach you how to approach leukemia in a general sense. Certain diagnostic techniques are common to all different subtypes of leukemia and we will illustrate them in this section. Also, we're going to talk about some specific diagnostic techniques. In particular, some cool newer techniques like flow cytometry and gene sequencing. Diagnosis and differential is followed by the treatment section. As with diagnosis and differential, where we talked about overall diagnostic approach, we're going to talk about the overall treatment approach to leukemia. We understand there are many different subtypes of leukemia, and the treatment obviously very much depends on the specific subtype of leukemia. But there are certain approaches to treatment that are common to all different kinds of leukemia. And then we're going to talk a little bit about specific treatment for each different kind of leukemia. Most importantly, and this is in part two of the lecture, we're going to talk about complications of leukemia and their management. Okay. Those are the complications that take a patient into the hospital and that you will see very frequently on your rotation on the leukemia ward. We'll finish up with an assessment and plan section where we teach you how to present a patient in front of your team and how to write the patient up. And lastly, we'll give you some take-home points. Okay, the five-minute bedside assessment. 
to help you to assess how sick is my patient. Does this patient need to see a hematologist now, overnight, or can this wait until tomorrow? And as always in the Yale 20, we think of triaging in a traffic light. Let's start with the green light. It's also our patients with chronic leukemia, either CML or CLL. Most of those patients get all their chemotherapy as outpatients. Okay? They don't get it as an inpatient. And their reason for admission to the hospital might be related to the leukemia, but often is completely unrelated to the leukemia. In any way, if there's no transformation into acute leukemia, those patients can wait to be seen by hematologists the next morning. Yellow light, and more critical, is acute leukemia. Okay? Acute leukemia um, um, is an issue that needs to be managed urgently, both AML and ALL. Importantly here for the yellow light is that those are patients without immediate complications of leukemia. They need inpatient treatment, okay? The outpatient treatment is certainly not um, sufficient for those patients. But unless they have those complications that we're going to talk about in a second, they don't need to be necessarily seen overnight by a hematologist. Very different situation if, if there are certain complications of leukemia. That's a wake-up call, okay? You need to call a hematologist in helping you to manage those patients. And we're going to talk about a lot of complications in this lecture, in particular about tumor lysis syndrome, DIC, which stands for Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation. We're going to talk about APL, acute promyelocytic leukemia. And we're going to talk about febrile neutropenia. We're going to talk about hyperleukocytosis, which means there are too many white blood cells in your body and they get stuck in your little capillaries, leading to stroke, pulmonary infarction, and other complications, as well as transfusion-dependent anemia and thrombocytopenia. You will often see a hematology attending coming into the hospital in the middle of the night to look at blood smears in order to rule out complications like APL or DIC. And it's certainly reasonable to transfer patients to the ICU when they have hyperleukocytosis, febrile neutropenia, or tumor lysis syndrome. ICU admission can be warranted. Okay? So keep that in mind if you see a leukemic patient that you first check out is this chronic leukemia or acute leukemia, and if it is acute leukemia, does it have complications or no complications?